German artist Magnus Plessen is a painter who mixes abstraction and realism freely. His paintings contain passages of near trompe l'oeil realism and areas of line, form, and color that disregard all conventions of composition, such as distinctions between foreground and background, and even top and bottom. Magnus, how would you describe the world in your paintings, the world that you create in your paintings, to somebody who's never seen one? I think that um, the beauty for me as a painter is that I can follow different systems of representation simultaneously. I can bring the concept of ball lightning, atoms the size of pumpkins, into the painting and at the same time relate to the palpable world as we know it, the world that we can touch the true size objects that we are used to. And by opening up the representation to these different um, logics of representation, I, I found a way of showing a world to me that I didn't know what it would look like. That's a, I think that is a very creative moment. If you do something in a figurative painting, and still, you're showing, as you're doing it, you're showing to yourself what this world possibly may look like without having seen it. And the title of this exhibition, Hope, Love, Helium, is a reference to Brian Swimmy's book, the, the Journey of the Universe, this process where nuclear fusion in stars creates helium and eventually all the elements. But what about hope and love? You've got this with this now helium gas, but you've added the terms hope and love to the title. How do they connect? I think it's rather than adding hope and love to helium, I took belief out of the biblical quote. And I think that's the, the important uh, step that I took. I don't need belief to explain where we come from. It is actually a scientific but yet creative situation, this transformation from hydrogen into helium, which started the whole process. And I think that's incredibly positive without having to have a religious explanation which puts the human being on top of creation and the rest around it. It is a process that I find personally, it's like a relief. I'm, I'm put in a situation where I am as an individual are not so important any longer. It is more the particles that are made of, that I'm made of that I can't consciously see suddenly play a role in the image that I want to give of human beings. These are really extraordinary paintings. There is no collage, it's all Paint. Can you talk about your walk? Walk us through how you physically make these paintings. I think um, to start with, I, I like the idea that I bring something to the canvas, and then the next step, I take it out of the canvas or I reduce it. And most of the color is really I work by reduction, by scraping it off, by wiping it away with a cloth. And there's one exception, and that's the the yellow, the structured yellow areas. The colors have different qualities. I think the blue, it's an indigo blue. I can hide things in the blue. Something like a ghost-like head can be within the blue structures. It has a certain depth, and within that depth, like looking at something that's underwater. So there's this goes away from me towards the depth of the creative space, whereas the yellow parts, the, the ball-like shapes, they come towards you. I can't hide anything in them. They are almost like independent. They, are, they have a certain maybe energy that they radiate, but there's not, nothing within that. You more than any other painter 
that I've met have uh, a vision of what it's like to put your brush on the canvas. And you've once said that sometimes you imagine that your brush is touching reality itself. And you've talked about a few markers of this. The stretcher marks that show through where you've pushed hard on the canvas. You use paper templates that you tape on, the, on your canvases in the first stages of planning the compositions. But when you remove them, you'll often paint the, the places where the tape was. Can you talk about your feelings when you're putting brush to canvas? Yes, I mean, I, I believe that um, when I started to paint, I wanted to only make straight brush marks. No curves, nothing round, only a straight line. And I, I thought that I could touch reality with a brush, which for me meant that if I imagine a point in reality, I almost make the brush mark indexical, that I just lay it on top of that. And that, for me, meant that I observe the action of applying this brush mark from this side, and then I step into the canvas, turn around, and see the underside. So I had, suddenly I had two sides to the brush mark. Almost I made it into an ultra thin, but yet an object, which I could turn. And still, I, I felt that I'm close to reality. And, and then I um, moved one step further. I thought, would it be possible as a painter to take a cast of reality? Is it possible to exclude that subjectivity that you normally have when you make a brush mark? The idea has come up that it's almost like being stuck between two states or two kind of realities. And it's not clear in which way I will push it. And I think we come to a point now where we have to abandon words because that is the intuitive part. That is the part of actually painting and going for it. You know, how far can I leave what I know and step into something that I don't know? And how far can I intuitively, creatively expand my mind to represent something that I don't know?